Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we are doing why does a specific situation keep repeating itself in your life? And to do that, as you can see, these are the three decks that we will be using. I've done something interesting in today's reading. I thought I would do it through the kings. And then that's the first king that showed up in this deck. And so I thought to myself, why don't I just allow whatever king to show up in each deck to show up, even if it's going to be like repeated and tell everyone that this is the king that showed up first as I'm like looking through the cards uh, to choose from. And it's interesting. They did come out quite diverse. So that's nice. Let me introduce the cards to you as you can see them in this deck. This is the king of cups. This is the first king that showed up, which is the king of cups. In this deck for pile number two, that's the king that showed up first. That's the king of wands. And in pile number three, this is the king that showed up first. And this is the king of swords. So that's one way to pick your pile today. Another way is, of course, through your crystals. And by the way, if you prefer to pick through your zodiac signs, do note that there is a timestamp down in the description box where you can click on your zodiac signs and begin watching right away so that you can pick. All right, if you prefer to pick with crystals, let me introduce your crystals to you. For pile number one, you have the beautiful red jasper. For pile number two, let me put it right there so you can actually see it on its own. For pile number two, you have the Mukite Jasper. And for pile number three, you have the beautiful blue agate. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this or these will be the piles for you here today. As I always encourage you, listen to your intuition, whether it's drawing you to just one pile and you know that's it, that's the pile for you. Or perhaps today you feel drawn to several, maybe even all. There's no such thing as too little or too much. It is your intuition that picks the piles for you. So let it lead the way. And once you're ready, please head down to the description box, click on your timestamps, and I will see you in your readings. If you prefer to pick with uh, zodiac signs, this next section is for you. But if you do not like seeing your zodiac signs with the piles and feel like it interferes uh, with you picking your pile, please, please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And as mentioned, I will see you in your readings. But if you do prefer to pick with your zodiac signs, then my dear soul family, this section, this next section has been created specifically for you. And what I have here, Actually, let me put it in a different zodiac, a uh, different pouch. Hold on. There we go. This one is much wider, and we can definitely shuffle them around. And once they are shuffled, I will be drawing four zodiac signs for each pile. Right. I think that's enough. Let's start drawing. in my hands. So the, the signs for pile number one are Aquarius, Taurus, oh, this one showed up, Sagittarius, and Scorpio. The signs for pile number two are one, two, three, and four. 
Capricorn, Aries, Cancer, and Leo. As for pile number four, the signs are Libra, Pisces, and Pisces. So take a look at which one of three piles, three crystals, or if you're choosing through zodiac signs now, everything's on the table. I highly recommend you choose your sun, rising, and moon to pick your piles. Sometimes you'll find the three in one pile or distributed amongst two or maybe even three. If you prefer to pick with just one zodiac sign, in that case, I highly recommend you choose by your rising sign. It will be the one that will resonate with you the most since it deals with your outermost world but how can you resist not watching by your sun sign right so this is all really up to you this this is just simply my advice and once you're ready please head down to the description box click on your timestamps and let's find out why does this specific situation keep repeating itself in your life Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful red jasper as well as this king of cups, which is leading us to use this deck for you in today's reading. And today we're taking a look at why does a specific situation keep repeating itself in your life? Oh, looks like you've got two cards here. And if you were drawn to your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, uh, the signs for this reading are Aquarius, Taurus, Sagittarius, and Scorpio. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your signs, please do not worry about them. And do note that they are present in your reading because their energies will be matching the energy of the reading itself. And always remember, it's a general reading. And there are several things within a reading that may be speaking to someone else, not necessarily to you. And that does not negate the fact that it's your pile. Okay, so these are the zodiac signs, zodiac signs, <laughs> these are the oracles that we will be using for you in today's reading. And let's now check them out. You have radical curiosity. Can you see your card? There we go. Radical curiosity, seeing as if for the first time, every time. Love that. Okay. Let's keep it there and you have the emotion of Aquarius, emotion of Aquarius with inspiration or indifference. Here you have a girl uh, jumping on top of the peak of a mountain, like taking a huge leap there. Oh, there we go. It explains it. A figure levit uh, levitates above a mountain. Okay. So she's levitating above a mountain. When you feel inspired, it's as if you are lifted on air. Very true, right? Inspiration can carry you far, but being lifted above can also symbolize a type of detachment, indifference, or apathy. You may need to, you may need a new jolt of inspiration to shift your emotions. So let's see what this is. Both have this element of childlike um, attitude, childlike in the good way, the things we need to ch uh, learn from children. I don't mean, of course, childlike as in acting in a childish way. I mean, both cards have in common this idea of being inspired, uh, moving towards your curiosity, believing you can do things, shutting everything 
uh, and only focusing on that one thing you're interested in, that type of energy. Okay, well, we'll just keep it to the side. I don't know how this is going to fit anyways yet in terms of what specific situation that is that keeps repeating itself in your life and how uh, and why. So here you have the material aspect of Leo with self-expression. And it says painting a self-portrait. Interesting. And you can see it's not totally perfect. It's the same, but it's not perfect. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Find the right fuel for your self-expression. Making something, whether a painting, a meal, a hairstyle or a song, will help you transcend the mundane. Through your creativity, you share your spirit with the world. It's so interesting the type of advice you're getting uh, in your reading or the type of energy, actually, you are getting in your reading. What's going on here? Call to change. Uh, so the first answer to your question, whatever the situation is that keeps repeating itself in your life, it keeps repeating itself because it's calling you to make a huge change. And look at the mountaintops that keeps appearing here. It wants you to, to look further. Maybe you're already at a good place in your life or maybe you believe you've done good things and it wants you to look further. It could be. Not sure yet. We'll wait until, since we have a nice space here, I think your crystal is part of your reading, definitely, because a, a, a space was created for your crystal here. So red jasper is associated with the root chakra, also the sacral chakra as well, both. And it's about self-expression. It is about confidence. It's also a stone that you can use to find stability if when needed all right it, it's definitely has to do it definitely has to do with finding the power within all right what chakra do you have you have the third eye chakra with recovery interesting and it's right next to the call the key to opening up the situation maybe that you are stuck in with the door being closed is to understand that this difficulty in your life or the situation that keeps repeating itself is calling for a change. Okay, so let's shuffle your tarot deck. This way we'll be, we'll be able to fully understand what we're seeing here. So why does a specific situation keep repeating itself in your life? Why does this specific situation keep repeating itself? Ah, thank you, in your life. Believe it or not, I kind of feel like these want to come out, so I'm going to take it the way it is. I'm going to put your deck to the side. How about we put it right there? And let's check out your tarot cards. You have the Ten of uh, Swords. I haven't used this deck in quite a while and I forgot. Is this the Ten of Wands or the Ten of Swords? I think this is the Ten of Swords, but I will check in a moment. Ah, the Three of Swords. Hmm. Very interesting. This is from the Philippines, Philippine legend. And it's quite interesting that this specific Three of Swords comes up. I think I'm starting to gain clarity on what this is. You have the Nine of Wands. The Page of Swords. Whoa. Ah, the World card. It's nearly, you're nearly getting it, I think. You're nearly seeing it because the world card fell. It's like, not yet completely, but you're nearly there. You're nearly getting it. It's like you're drawing it. Or you're starting to see it. Really cool. Uh, um, okay. And you have the eight of pentacles. Wow. 
this was all to your favor. I'll talk to you about this tower card in a moment. And you have the hanged man. Look at this. How interesting. Okay, you've got one more card. I think we're meant to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push your cards a little bit up so that we have space for this card. And look how much space we're creating for one card. Uh, maybe you are underestimating something and it's trying this uh, lesson or this situation was trying to show you just how important this thing is so you've got the two of cups harmony or something because it can get you harmony can create harmony inside and outside so what is going on and what is the situation that keeps repeating itself can't wait to dive into your reading and find out. I feel called to reading about this recovery card, this third eye recovery card. Let me get the guidebook. There we go. I'm noticing here, do you see? We did say with the Two of Cups to create space for something that you're not focused on because it will find, create harmony in your life and with yourself. It's like you're rediscovering yourself or something. But anyways, back to the recovery card with the third eye chakra. Let's check this out and see what the story is about. Because the interesting thing about this deck is that there's a story associated with each card. So let's check out this recovery one. Ah, there we go. The lilac key, it says. Pain from our past unlocks the door of understanding. Exactly that was our direction, wasn't it? Greta wakes to find painful childhood memories all around her room. In the distance appears a huge wooden door with white light streaming through the keyhole. As Greta tries to gather up her painful memories, they melt and form the great lilac key. She places the key in the lock and a wave of fear engulfs her. The door opens and the pain and fear recede. Clarity comes. Survival, survival is no longer enough. So inspiration, once the key has been used to open the door, you will have a new way of living, one without keys, where you are heading, where you are heading, there are no locks. So there is definitely a strong idea in your reading that the, the lesson or the, um, not the, I don't know why I keep saying lesson, but <laughs> the situation that keeps reoccurring in your life has been a lesson, perhaps, exactly, has been a lesson trying to show you something, calling you for some form of change. And when you stop with the Three of Swords, suffering through it and rather like focusing, of course, you're definitely suffering through this or like it, it's not comfortable. That's not what it's trying to say. It, it, focusing on the suffering, but rather on what it's trying to show you and what call of change it is trying to make you see you will open up this stuck situation forever. This lesson will not just never repeat itself again, but you will open up doorways to the benefits of what this lesson is trying to teach you. So you're asking, well, how would I know? That's why you have the radical curiosity with having the curiosity without fear to look at your situation and see, what is it trying to teach me? Um, the childlike curiosity, it's like children are not afraid. They're, they're not afraid to touch the fire. It's like we, we always have to like, oh, be careful, that's electricity or be careful with that. It's inviting you 
to look at what is trying to show you within yourself and within the situation that you may perhaps not have been entirely honest about or maybe you've been honest but you haven't dig you haven't been digging deep enough maybe it hurts when it digs deep but the situation is trying to show you something and, and with the third eye chakra for you to see it for the first time the way it truly is and uh, i see that it will see because you have also see yourself here to see the situation for what it is once you see something although it might hurt a little it will be your freedom forever where you can definitely come out of the situation you can see the the common factor between the ten of swords or ten of wands whatever that is i didn't check i'll check it now and the world card the common factor here is an end of a journey end of a cycle and you start anew speaking of which let's check out whether this is the ten of swords or the ten of wands Okay, so this is the Ten of Swords, which means that this was a very painful, like perhaps this was the most painful um, situation that, that keeps, rec like situation in your life. And you can even see it here with the Three of Swords. In fact, taking a look at the Three of Swords here, this is the, uh, from the Philippine legends, the Manangal, Ma sorry, Mananangal, Mananangal. And... It's like uh, one of the, the scariest form of a shape shift, sorry, shape shifting uh, creature. And if you can see, its tongue is like long and it's like tube like um, and it's hollow and it um, sucks the viscera. And that's how it feeds. Right. So to me, this is telling me that perhaps this situation could be not just causing you pain but it keeps feeding you with wrong ideas the more you go through the cycle the more you're convinced of perhaps your limiting beliefs because with viscera you know this is like consuming crap right <laughs> so it's like it keeps the more it happens the more you keep believing in a specific limiting belief, and that's why you have an invitation to look otherwise. Um, it keeps hurting you and it keeps solidifying you or feeding you with wrong ideas. And it is these wrong, very wrong ideas that have been keeping you in the cycle and, and attracting this lesson or this, I keep saying, saying lesson, or this situation into your life over and over. And it's like never ending. Do you see? It's supposed to be the world card. It's supposed to be ending. But you do have the Ouroboros giving me the idea that when and whenever it ends, it starts again. It's like keeps repeating itself. And it doesn't stop unless you stop to see it for what it really is. Stopping to see it, although may not be perfect, but you will be able to outline it in the correct way you'll be able to understand yourself in the best way and you're gonna go from indifference apathy to actually taking a huge leap forward just by seeing the situation seeing the situation with the third eye chakra will be the instant opening up to this door and the instant harmony in your life and and there is by the way it continues to show that this lesson ke keeps repeating itself until you master it with the eight of pentacles and it will keep you hostage in it until you see it and if you're thinking but this is painful why is the universe doing this to me this is your question this is your answer right there with the tower card it's a very it's one of my favorite tower cards i told you about this one a lot of times it's about the wyoming uh, devil tower and one of the legends the one of the north uh, american legends it tells the story of two boys who were a native of course i mean native north american legends were wandering off their village and sorry the camera just went off so anyways like i was explaining this huge bear was trying to attack them as they went off of the village and because um, as the story goes, the creator took pity on them and caused the earth to suddenly shake and rise. 
saving them from this bear. You can see the bear falling off and the marks, leaving marks as it falls off. So to me, this is saying for sure that this chaotic situation that keeps reappearing in your life may feel in the moment as shaky, as unstable, as terrible. It may, it may make you feel stuck, but it really is there to save you from a specific situation that could have been much worse had the world or the universe left you uh, to maybe think or see the situation the way it is. Because you can see here with mana, the mana nango that was feeding you visceral, viscera, I mean, you know? So perhaps it was teaching you some wrong ideas about yourself that, that are not true, simply not true. They're not, they're, they shouldn't be there. It was teaching you to be maybe behave in a specific way or do something in a specific way. And it was putting a lot of boundaries between you and the possibilities that you can achieve or the possibilities of who you are meant to become. And you see that creature here reminds me again of the third eye. This whole situation is allowing you to see yourself or to see a specific situation for its true reality for the first time. And you will be freed from the situation with a little bit of thought. This is the page of swords, not the king of swords, not the queen of swords. And also what's common, you won't believe this. I just remember the page of swords is the archetype of curiosity. It, one of the meanings of the page of swords is to just like a child have open curiosity, which takes us to the important thing about your reading to open up your eyes. And the recovery, as we saw from this card, is to start seeing the situation for what it truly is. And then you won't need a key at all. You'll be free. A huge door will open up its, to you, an unlimited door, which will allow you to do whatever it is that you want in life in the way that you want it. You won't be limited by circumstances or situations or how things turn out. You will be the one to be able to do the things that you want in your own way. And so you're being guided to explore and to maybe see through the situation a little bit deeper to be curious about why it's happening. Because the more you dig, the more you free yourself. I just envisioned, as I was saying that to you right before I, I was about to say that to you, I envisioned the more curious you are, the more you think about it, the more this cage keeps getting wider and wider until it pops and breaks and opens and opens and opens and you're free. You're absolutely free to use your wings and fly off. You have a lot of wings here that need to fly off, that want to fly off. And so the end of your journey and not the repetition of the cycle, the end of the journey will happen when you master that lesson. Perhaps by that, uh, by that you want more guidance, I'm sure, on maybe I can help you through the cards, begin that journey of curiosity, put you on the right track, or maybe give you valuable uh, guidance that the universe can give you in today's reading. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that your harmony lies in that one area that you could be taking for granted. Maybe you're misinterpreting it. See, you're misinterpreting a certain situation because you're misinterpreting it. It keeps feeding you the wrong feedback and it keeps putting you in the cycle of how can I do it when this is right and when this is wrong or when I should be doing this or when this happens to me, whatever that is. It's that one area you refuse, it seems, to explore. And we had to like shift all the cards to give it the space. Exploring that area as we'll see what it is now, will give you the harmony that you need because it will allow you to see yourself. And I think this is self-love maybe. Or seeing yourself in the situation for the first time. Or maybe just seeing the reflection of your situation for the first time. If you explore the only part you have not explored or seen until now. So let's see what this, uh, what you haven't been seeing. And we'll leave this card on top. That's what we're exploring at the moment. What aren't you seeing, my dear pile number one? 
What aren't you seeing, my dear pile number one, that the universe wants you to see? What aren't you exploring? And where to begin with your curiosity path? I feel these two as well. So we're going to take them. And we can place the two of cups up there. That's the card we're exploring. And we have five cards. I'll leave them in the exact position they came out. I mean, these to the left, these to the right. I'm just going to create space for them. There we go. So let's see. Ah, you have Baba Yaga here with the Eight of Swords. Oh, something keeps fooling you. Something keeps luring you in. This is an idea with the Eight of Swords. There is an idea that you are following blindly. And it keeps proving it itself to you because you were following it in the first place. Of course, it's going to uh, keep uh, fooling you. What is it though? We'll find out in a moment. You have, look at the eyes, the clouds and the eyes shining to see something. You have the two of swords. It's a thought for sure. And you have the emperor, the headless man, the head, the thoughts, the seeing. And you have the ace of pentacles. Oh, yeah. And you have, hmm, and you have the Hierophant, both for me. You're navigating also through a lot of emotions and it's turbulent. And I think here your reading is saying your, your uh, extreme emotions which is, of course, absolutely valid and understandable. I'm just first seeing what the cards are showing. It's your emotions, how turbulent they are, that keep you not seeing the truth. But although the emotions are turbulent, you appear as much stronger than these emotions. They, at the end of the day, they can't devour you. You're much stronger and you can pass through them. So... What I'm starting to understand here, where your curiosity may want to take you, is that, yes, although the emotions are strong, the delusion here could be, or the, mis the limiting belief, sorry, the limiting belief could be that you are, in, although the, the emotions are high in the situations, you are much stronger. Your mind is much stronger. How? Do you see the headless man? Detach the mind from the emotions. It's not like fighting the emotions off and, and asking it to go away. It's about not engaging with it, with the headless man. Not engaging with the emotions. And soon enough, as you disengage, like, don't confirm it. Don't give it attention by going, oh, I feel bad about the situation. This is making me... And then you start involving yourself into these emotions and feel like they are, in fact, in control. With the headless man and the emperor, you find your power by realizing that these emotions are there, but disengaging. You're like, hello, I know you're there. I'm not engaging. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to give you attention and actually um an ancient hinduism that's one of the ways to deal with big emotions like fear and any any emotion that arises it's not about fighting them it's about just letting it be but detaching the mind from it and slowly but surely the lack of response makes these emotions little by little dissipate. And along with that, I can't remember what the, the teaching of what I'm saying is. But I know that another thing that is, is one's guided to do is to focus also on another emotion that is beneficial, like a gratitude, love. And this way you slowly disengage from 
the, these emotions. And so it is these emotions w uh, that are not making you think clearly with the Two of Swords and see things clearly. And not acknowledging these emotions, not fighting them, but not engaging with them. Detaching mentally and to shift your focus. You know, energy flows where our focus goes, uh, where our attention goes. So to focus more on things like gratitude or to focus more on the blessings you're in, to focus more on what you want rather. Yeah, shift your focus. And that is, I think, what uh, you're being guided to do here. Shift your focus. Because with the Baba Yaga, you know, Baba Yaga, in Slavic folk uh, mythology, uh, brings candy to the children and she's like, hey, follow me, right? In order to devour them, same thing. But then there are smart kids who take the candy and don't follow Baba Yaga and, and Baba Yaga loses. So here it's telling you with the Eight of Swords, you're not stuck, you're not stuck. You're stuck if you follow Baba Yaga or that scary thought or that cycle or these emotions. Take the advantage of it showing you what it wants to teach you. That's the sweet, but don't follow it. So these emotions are here to tell you something. Absolutely listen to them, but don't engage. And this is how you shall find your prosperity. Uh, this is the Ace of Pentacles. This is the learning with the Hierophant. This is your new beginning. And I can't remember, I think Nang Kwak, if I'm not mistaken, Nang Kwak uh, of Thai folklore here, a bringer of great fortune to the homes. So you can see that this, this technique or this way of thought will allow you to bring good fortune. So continue to explore. The more you look deeper into the situation and see what it's trying to show you without engaging emotionally, take the sweet, like take the learning, explore first, take the learning, don't run away, take the learning, see what these emotions are trying to show you. What are they trying to teach you? How you should defend yourself or how you should do better. It's not about running away from it. It's about first taking the lesson and then disengaging. You can tell Baba Yaga to go. Thank you very much. Thank you for the sweets. And that your emotions are not stronger than you. You appear in your two of swords as much bigger. The swords are the mind. Detach. Don't engage with it. You know the movie with Beautiful Mind? I was just thinking about that actually. Um, beautiful Mind. Where he can still see the uh, his friends but he wasn't engaging with his friends any longer so they're there he knows they're fake and doesn't interact with with them anymore they can't they don't have that amount of control that they used to have on him and he's free now so i, I see that this process what the key's trying to show you what you've been through is valid it's it, it it definitely was painful. Nobody can take that away from you. But to end the suffering is within your hands. And to end the suffering is important because it will lead you to greater heights. Look at the mountains. It will lead you to the power with the emperor that you want. And mastering that lesson is therefore very important because it will bring harmony to your life. So perhaps the one thing you haven't been exploring is to disengage with the emotions. It's that these things aren't showing you what you think they were showing you. It's they were, they were taking you down a rabbit hole that kept repeating the cycle for you. And what is important is not what happens in the outside world. Ah, maybe the one thing you weren't looking at is within. It doesn't matter what situ how situations happen, what people perhaps do in the outside world, or what you're fortunate with or, or not. What is important is your internal world and how to disengage with these emotions. When these emotions are heightened, they put a huge focus on something. And the more sober you become, you realize, hey, it's not that important after all. It reminds me of perspective of how we sometimes see something so important when without all of the emotions attached to it, 
we can realize how we may have exaggerated things. It reminds me of the story of that businessman, businessman that went on this beautiful island on his vacation, only to meet with a simple fisherman who goes out fishing, brings his family food, and lives a simple life on this beautiful, beautiful island. And so the businessman was really perplexed, asking the fisherman, why are you just getting one fish every day? You know, you have this awesome skill. You can take your net and you're really good at fishing. You know the cycles of... Uh, you understand the cycles of nature so well. You understand when this type of fish is coming. You you just get it. Why are you getting one fish? Why don't you get so many fish? And you're going to become a millionaire in, in, in such a small time. And the fisherman said, why do I need to disturb nature like that? And why do I want to become a millionaire? And the millionaire says, well, when you're a millionaire, you can be free and you can afford to have vacations such as this luxurious vacation that I'm on. And the fisherman said, well, I'm already living this life. I already am free. I, I don't have to work as hard as you do. I'm already living in this gorgeous island. I already have a balanced life. I already have what I want on this island. And I, I, and maybe you worked enough to come here. I already am here. <laughs> I'm living this life for free. So uh, maybe that doesn't apply to everyone. But for this fisherman, he was already in that blessing. Maybe the business person asked the wrong person the wrong question, right? So I'm just saying that sometimes when our emotions are heightened, we tend to hold on to a belief so hard. And when these emotions calm down, we start going, oh, you know, that wasn't so such a bad situation. And it happens when we're angry. Sometimes when we're furious, we tend to think, this is the most horrible situation in the world. And after like a week when we've calmed down, we're like, okay, so that was bad for sure, but wasn't as bad as I was feeling it in the moment. So all I'm trying to say is that if you detach your mind from your emotions, things will come into their perspective and you will be shocked to realize just how far the perspective was from where you saw it with emotions and how it actually really is in real life. And from that perspective, you'll be able to take better decisions in life. You'll be able to do things where you're not paralyzed anymore with the eight of swords. You're free to roam and life just opens up its doors to you for you to free yourself, be who you want to be. Be yourself or achieve the dreams that you want to achieve. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see in your reading on why does this situation keep repeating itself in your life? I wish you the best of luck and I truly hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out the productivity handbook. It's small, straight to the point. You're not going to procrastinate reading it, but it will help you as you plan for the next year. Um, if you are someone who likes to plan at the beginning of the year, you know, energetically, it's a new year. We can use that energy to put our goals, set our goals out into the universe and achieve them. And if you want a book to help you become productive all while enjoying the process. This handbook is the book for you. Like I said, a small straight to the point. And also it's full of advice and great um, key ideas that will shift your mindset towards productivity forever, allowing you to be on top of it and allowing you to enjoy the process. This book is truly a mind shifter. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to it down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pal number one, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful Mukite Jasper as well as this deck through the King of Wands. And today we're taking a look at why a specific situation keeps reoccurring in your life. 
And to do this reading, these are the cards that we will be using. Also, if you picked this pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case only, the, the signs for this pile are, oh, looks like you've got two, Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Leo. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always say, please do not worry about them and do note that this is a general reading. There are some things that will resonate very well with you and there are, the, are other things that are specific to others, but it doesn't mean that what you've picked intuitively isn't your pile. It's definitely your pile. Okay, so this is the last or... Oh, these are two again. These are the last cards. Let's now open them up and see what it what your reading wants to say so you have misalignment and it says miracles become normal once we face all of the aspects of our life in the same direction hmm. okay let's keep it here and you have Energy or anger. This is the emotional aspect of Aries. Energy or ang uh, anger. A fireball flies through the sky. You may feel energetic. Take the opportunity to fly into action and spark your creativity. If it's anger that you're feeling, contemplate what may be hidden beneath. Will a fiery outburst really give you the results you want? Interesting card. So... Let's keep it right there. Miracles become normal once we face all of the aspects of our life in the same direction. I'll actually take a look at the message in this card for you guys. Um, yeah. So you have the crown chakra with instinct. You have the third eye chakra with despondence. Also, when I said despondence, I suddenly heard in my mind very strongly correspondence. So I'll take that word also into consideration. And you have sovereign. As well as comedian. <laughs> okay. Now, let's take a look at your tarot cards. And see, why is this situation, why does this situation keep reoccurring in your life? Why does it keep repeating itself in your life? So these are your tarot cards. Also, this one just moved when I was putting it on the table. So I'm going to take it. All right. So your cards are the King of Pentacles. The Chariot. The Justice card. Interesting, the chariot here. These are the two animals from the Wheel of Fortune. Um, the four animals on the Wheel of Fortune pertain to um, um, Hebrew, if I'm not mistaken. Let me revise that in a moment for you. And look at the line popping up twice. You have the Eight of Pentacles. You have the Queen of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles, the Tower card, and you have the Hanged Man. All right. Four more cards. We'll leave it to the side. And let's take a look at what is this situation. Hmm. Oh, well, before we take a look at the exact situation, I just want to say the first 
message here about this specific situation that keeps reoccurring into your life, you have this idea of you, if you take things lightly in your heart, not as in your, in your actions, but if you take things with the comedian lightly in your heart, you gain power in this situation. Perhaps this is a situation that's trying, that's reoccurring in your life, trying to show you not to take it so much to heart because if you don't take it to heart, because with the tower cards, you see, like it triggers you maybe, it, it takes you off guard, it shocks you, maybe it takes the power off of your feet. And I'm noticing a lot of positions here, the strength card the and the justice sitting in the place of the chariot, you have the king of pentacles, the queen of pentacles. I keep getting this reoccurring idea, especially with the sovereign, that... It, it's like something is taking your power. The situation keeps happening. Uh, this situation keeps happening. And you think it's taking away your power when in fact it keeps reoccurring to you just to show you that nothing can take your power. And if you take it in a lighthearted way, you get to see your own power and you maintain your power in this situation. Of course, this is like the summary. We'll get deeper into your reading and try to understand it. First, I want to check out the four animals. I remember I read it before. It pertains to some... Uh... Let me check it out. I found it. So... I kept saying Hebrew. I want to say Judaism. I don't know why I kept saying Hebrew. In Judaism, the four animals, they, in, so I want to say in the Wheel of Fortune, we see the four headed animals and they represent uh, Ezekiel when he had this vision and he saw the four animals in the throne of Jehovah and he was in awe by their power and he was in awe of the throne and um, some analysis were saying that perhaps he was uh, in awe of how uh, Jehovah can use his creation to accomplish his purposes and speaking of Hebrew that I kept saying uh, you know the Hebrew letters on Oh no, the letters, not the Hebrew letter, the letters in the Wheel of Fortune, they say Torah, right? And we and in the original High Priestess, you can see the Torah and and that's what she's holding. So I think your reading is referencing to this story. I believe it is saying that the universe was using perhaps people specifically or this situation specifically to trigger to trigger you into finding your power. That's what I'm seeing exactly here. So this whole situation keeps repeating itself. You keep feeling that you're losing power when in fact, it's like this keeps happening so that you can find your power. You know, the Wheel of Fortune, speaking of the Wheel of Fortune is the number 10. It's the Malkuth in the Tree of Life. It's the spirit manifesting, as I always say, manifesting into the earth kingdom, right? So, especially with the crown chakra, this is saying that there is energy. You have energy and you're not using it in the 3D. And it's kind of like uh, your spirit or the universe is using these circumstances so that you can get in touch uh, of this power and like remember it even on a soul level and so with misalignment this is saying that you have something but you're not aligned with it and so for this reason with the chariot also reminds me of the merkaba this spiritual you know traveling back and forth it's like you trying to get access your soul is trying to get access to a certain power that you already have that you're not aligned with and this situation will continue to trigger you until you find your power and it reminds me 
I, I remembered several, I paused because I remembered, I just channeled actually, no, not remembered, I channeled different stories at the same time. Um, and now I forgot all of them. I think if when I connect, I remember these uh, stories. So let's first start with the sovereign and the comedian. That's the last thing I was going to say, and I'm sure I'm going to remember the stories that I wanted to say. So here, oh, I was going to say I remember. Yes, I, I understand why I said I remember. So one's channeled here and one uh, I remember. Good. So with misalignment, I remember talking to someone a long way, a long, long time ago. Uh, and she was telling me, but this person is really unfair. And he's saying all these things about me and it's not true. And I said, I understand why you're upset. I totally understand why you're upset, but I'm more worried about you. Why are you taking it to heart? Does this person determine who does he decide for you who you are? What type of power does he have? If these two or three people are going to be convinced that you don't know how to do something or that you are this way, it's okay. Let them believe. They'll always believe what they want to believe. Don't give them that much power. At the end of the day, it's not a serious situation where they are defining your fate. Let it go. You know the truth about the situation. Don't, it's okay to be upset, but really don't be that upset about it. Just let them go. They're going to be what they want to be. So in this situation, she was allowing them to have that form of power over her. They can see her responding. They can see her reacting. And that's why I gave her this advice. They were very happy to see her like trying to get her power back when really they don't own it. So, ah, look at that energy or anger. So in all cases, perhaps there is a similar energy. Ah, 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 before we go to perhaps the channeled energy here is exactly what the cards are showing. It's to take it in the heart to heart lightly. That way you show your power. And so, Taking things lightly will disarm the power that the situation or the people have over you, giving you complete control over it. And whatever this story is that keeps repeating itself at its core, that's what is tr trying. That's what the universe is trying to do. And that's what maybe even on a soul level, your soul, higher self is trying to do with this reoccurrence of the situation. So I'm channeling, laughing about the situation and making fun of it in your mind at least, will break the sacredness and the taboo associated with the situation in your mind, allowing you to not feel that trigger whenever it happens. Make jokes, Make jokes about yourself, about the situation, about what happened. Yeah, I, I see that bringing, making it lighthearted, joking about it, constantly joking about it, talking about it in a lighthearted way is not going to make you act in an irresponsible way. It's just going to break that ooh, sacredness and the taboo of the whole situation, the seriousness in your mind about this situation, allowing you to act with so much ease whenever this uncomfortable situation occurs. I see you being in this uncomfortable, what was an un uncomfortable situation, in such a balanced way with temperance. Your emotions are running smoothly. You're calm within. You're no longer triggered. And so these scary situations that are being pushed onto you are like the tools from the universe being pushed to you so that you can mimic and, f and bring out your own intelligence. Uh, uh, oh, your own uh, strength. I was going to say strength. Perhaps it's channeled. Your own strength. 
And this way you would have successfully, just like a Merkaba with the chariot, you would have like uh, traveled spiritually, kind of like uh, got in touch with your power, bringing it down to the Malkuth, owning it forever as a soul. And I'm channeling something so weird here. It's like these um, mythical beings, they create this energy and it's during these moments that you can catch this energy and it's like um the way you can get your uh, power from the ethereal world is through these sparks you can either see it as oh no that's a horrible situation or oop here goes the fireball let me catch it it's an opportunity for you to catch and own that strength almost like the spirit is pushing it onto you from the other side so you can catch it and align with it crazy right so awesome i can't believe it <laughs> and so with the third eye chakra it's shifting your perspective to seeing it as an opportunity rather than a trigger or a threat when it does in fact happen and the more and and, and your key to this is that the more you make lightheartedness out of the situation, joke about it, make fun of it, you know, break that sacredness of it in your mind, the more you'll be calm and able to catch it when it's time. That calmness within that situation that keeps repeating itself will give you the ultimate power. It's like with the Six of, uh, cu uh, six of Cups. That's the background of the Six of Cups. It speaks also with, of the soul, right? It's like your higher self giving you that power. It's like the spirit world passing that power to you here so you can keep it forever. The, the experiences that we go through in the Malkuth are important. They make us get in touch with ourselves, find our power. That's why we're here, to grow spiritually. And so somehow... Somehow, this is allowing you to catch that fireball that they keep sending to you. You keep seeing it as a threat. They keep sending it to you so that you can take that power, align with it. Isn't this awesome? Oh, my God. And the way to catch it is not to be in the feels, in the emotions, and be triggered because you miss it every time. You must be calm in order to catch it. And... The calmness, as, as we can see in your cards, is through humor. And this is so true, you know, with humor. Do you see how, like, some people are, uh, in, like, in some form of trouble or difficult situation and you get into their family and they're, like, lighthearted and they're joking about it, laughing about it, <laughs> and they're moving on with their day trying to adjust it. It's that tranquility that allows someone to not take something to heart and it's so cool your reading here is giving you the key for it make light lightness out of the situation make fun of it joke about it uh, find the funny part of it don't joke about it from a place of hurt joke about it from a place of perhaps laughing at yourself first to break that ego <laughs> right like make fun of um, not yourself as a person, but of the action, never yourself as a soul, of the action that happened. As we always say, condemn the behavior, never the person. Same is true with uh, ourselves, of course. So you've got more cards. Eight of, uh, sorry, before we take a look at your cards, because I was going to check it out here. I really feel this is perhaps where you need the guidance, how to make light of the situation. But I wanted to tell you with the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups, this is reassurance and confirmation that you master this lesson with the Eight of Pentacles. You find yourself completely out of it because the whole purpose of this is for you to find your power. Okay, so... Since this is the biggest advice and you do have despondence, there is like a little bit of hope towards or discouragement towards the situation. I think your guidance here lies right there. So let's pull out these two cards. Keep them right there. 
and check out what your guidance is on how to make light heartedness out of the situation especially that there is despondence so you have the three of wands there we go the temperance card is upright now page of cups is standing upright not the card and you have the death card death ego i'm feeling death ego and queen of wands with a birth let me think about that what are we seeing here some movement must happen because this cup is broken and it's being moved to a cleaner cup hmm how can you make fun of the situation? I'm seeing these as other people. So to me, this is saying detach like from one cup to another, right? Detach yourself from the situation and look at it from another person's eye. How would you make fun and light of the situation as another person and not yourself? Remembering also that you're making fun of the behavior, not the person. I think the joke is not going to happen as long as you're attached to your ego. You must detach and move yourself from one vessel to another, one body to another. Take yourself out of it. Put yourself in another person outside of your situation and explore how you would make fun of this behavior. And with the winged beings, this is where the power is. Because actually one of the beings was a face of a man. So I truly believe this is saying, take yourself out of it. Like I said, and put yourself in another person's shoe, looking at your situation. How would another person, you now, the other person, make fun of this behavior of this whole situation of this be the whole thing together the situation the behavior the dynamics the story maybe you want to journal about this look at all the taboos of the situation make fun of it poke fun at the very things that are taboo at that are you know untouchable there needs to be movement in this place. This is where the light-heartedness needs to fall. To joke about it. The pomegranates, they represent the underground. To me here, it would represent the subconscious mind. This is a great way to nurture that pain in your subconscious mind. And you will be rebirthed as a new person being able to catch that power when it happens. That is the rebirth of a new you that is calm in the situation. Can you believe it? The whole situation and the whole alignment and the whole catching is cleansing your mind, your subconscious mind about how it sees this as this ooh, taboo. And the one way to do it is to take yourself out of it and to joke about it as another person not at the self, but at the behavior and the whole situation at large. Bringing light at heart, light heartedness. Think of jokes. Think of funny things to say and laugh about it. <laughs> this will heal your subconscious mind without knowing, giving you complete tranquility during the situation when it arises. And it will allow you to catch that which spirit is trying to, sh to shoot at you for you to own your power. Oh my God, pile number three. Mastering this, mastering the within first will allow you to successfully, once and for all, take yourself out of the situation and master it forever. And congratulations, you're about to own your power now. My dear pile number two, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up 
subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity handbook. If this is a time for you where you want to plan for the next year, new year, new energy, make use of that energy to start tackling your dreams and goals, then you want to check out the productivity handbook. It's small, straight to the point. You're not going to procrastinate or waste time reading it, but you will find that it has all the key advice and secrets to helping you become a productive person right away as soon as you finish this ebook with great ideas that will change the way you look at productivity forever. And most importantly, it will truly show you how to have fun uh, doing it. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also, by the way, an audiobook. You can listen to it as you're doing something and listen to it and enjoy it. And my dear pile number three, sorry, two, why did I say three? <laughs> my dear pile number two, thank you so much for tuning in. All the best of luck with this situation. Sending you so much love. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Don't be disheartened, my dear pile number two. You're going, you're going to ace this like there's no tomorrow. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You were drawn to the beautiful blue agate as well as this deck. Ah, I feel this one. Through the King of Swords. And today we're taking a look at why a specific situation... Oh, thanks. A specific situation keeps reoccurring in your life. If you've picked this pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, and that case only... Uh, your zodiac signs for this pile are Libra, Virgo, Pisces, and Gemini. Welcome to your Pisces. Uh, welcome to your Pisces. <laughs> welcome to your pile, guys. If these are not your zodiac signs, please do not worry about them and do note that they are present in your reading because their energies will be matching the energies of the reading itself. Remember that this is a general reading. Some details may resonate, some may not. Does not determine whether it's your pile or not. You've picked it intuitively, trust the process, and let's see if the message resonates or not. All right, so let's take a look at your Oracle cards. You have wishful expectations. How interesting. Can you see your card? There we go. You have acknowledged the smoke and mirrors in your life for what they are. And you can see this person being tied to this wheel that's taking her up and down and up and down, you know? It's like she, her fate and maybe who she is, maybe how she feels, maybe how she responds even, is so tied to what's happening to her and the cycles of life. So we'll keep this here and we'll see what this is all about in a moment. Let's take a look at the rest of your cards. You have perspective and you have the spirit aspect of Gemini. Look at these two cards, uh, two uh, books. You have every book contains a story. Stories can be enrapturing. We tell stories to make sense of life, but sometimes our stories limit us. Which stories are carved in stone and which are you ready to revise? Write your autobiography from a new perspective and enjoy a shift in attitude. Exactly. A shift in perspective, a shift in attitude. Very deep reading so far. Let's take a look at the rest of your cards. So you have returning home. And I'm hearing in my, my mind the word safety. So I don't know how this is going to fit into the reading yet, but we do see the red root chakra. So maybe returning home is to feel safe or maybe returning to something you already had. We'll find out. And you have oppressor. How interesting. Okay. You also have the third eye chakra with faith. If I'm not mistaken, today... The three piles got the third eye chakra. I think this is to say that it's all about shifting 
the way you see something. And I'm not surprised because you have perspective, right? So especially in this pile, it's a matter of perspective. And this card is quite interesting, actually, when it talks about perspective. We'll talk about it in a moment. But let's pull out your tarot cards. This way we get to understand the whole situation and understand why, exactly why this situation keeps repeating itself into your life. Why? What is it shifting your perspective towards? What, what, what is going on? Right. So you have the Eight of Wands and something so weird. I know the Eight of Wands are moving like for a second. I felt like they were breaking in air, mid air, like they've broken mid air. So I'll take that into consideration. And you have the Ten of Pentacles. So sweet. <laughs> okay. Looks like they're cold and they're cozying up. All right. Yet sitting outside. You have the Eight of Cups. The Knight of Cups. The Four of Cups. Hmm. And look at that, seeing something. The Ace of Wands. The Nine of Cups. The Three of Wands. And you have the Six of Swords. You have two more cards. We'll explore them in due time. Let me place them right there. Okay, so what's going on here in this pile? Hmm. This is definitely catching my attention. Yeah, because with the Wheel of Fortune, I, 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 sorry, Wheel of Fortune, the, the, this, uh, this wheel, <laughs> I'll put the Wheel of Fortune into consideration. But I'm feeling like s the oppressor energy speaks about something is taking control of you or your life, or at least you think, because that's what the cards are showing. You do have smoke and mirrors. Acknowledge the smoke and mirrors in your life for what they are. Maybe this is talking about the, situ the situation keeps arising in your life because you keep giving it power. The, the whole situation is that you keep giving it power and somehow you completely let go, feel defeated, and you're convinced that you are defeated and you just let it take you. Hmm. Uh, you know, you're, you're letting this uh, situation oppress you. Whether you're aware, I think you're not even aware of it because you do have the smoke and mirror and to acknowledge it. This situation that keeps repeating itself in your life only has that power because you give in to it so easily. Your conviction that there's nothing in your hands to do and that your hands are tied is what's making this situation take a hold of you. And this situation is not meant to stop you from something. It's just meant to reroute you to another direction. And I said that because you have the faith card right there. And you can see that this person is looking for some treasure. But then as she was on her way, the, the wall stood in, like stood, uh, uh, blocked her path. She thought at least the path was blocked. And you can see her guides here telling her 
this is not meant to block you. This is meant to reroute you and to show you different options of doing things. And I'm so sure about this. I uh, Let me get the guidebook. It explains it in a much more beautiful way than what I'm saying with this third eye chakra it want it's a third eye chakra it wants you to see something it wants you to see that you're not blocked they it wants to show you not to give in so easily these keep showing up because they are meant to awaken the faith within the faith in yourself that's what the situation keeps showing you remember when i told you i saw the eight of wands breaking mid-air it's like you have this strong manifestation power you start and something small gets into the way and it breaks your will or maybe breaks the belief in yourself and by manifestation i mean manifesting manifesting what you had hoped in this situation to happen whatever this is and so this break mid-air happens because you believe too quickly that you can't maybe handle it and so once you believe you can't handle it, this situation starts moving you in a direction that you don't want. It's exactly like, I'll read it to you in a moment, but it's exactly like having an, um, a child behave, a neighbor's child behave in an annoying way to you. Like every time you leave the house, they go, na, 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 I don't like you, <laughs> you know? So um, one person would, would say, oh, I wish you would have a lovely day. Goodbye. And off you go. And another person would take it to heart and not go out. Like, I don't want to go out because that child is going to tell me I don't like you. And so you feel like life is not giving you the opportunity to go out, that you can't do anything and perhaps this child wasn't blocking your way for you. This is, of course, a very small example for you to understand the energy I'm trying to explain. The child isn't the block. Maybe there is too much attention on the child's wor uh, words. Maybe it's shifting perspective to try and learn what the situation is trying to show you instead of taking it as the universe blocking you from perhaps what you want it's shift shifting perspectives and this is what the guides are doing here telling her you're not blocked let me read this uh, part to you here it says royal purple brick i am more than i think i am so the legend here Peggy is terrified. She can't see past the wall in front of her and it is preventing her from moving forward. She cries out for help. The great spirits appear and tell her that she is holding a royal purple brick, thinking it's a wall. They encourage her to place the brick back in the path and ask her not give up on life. Peggy lowers the brick to the ground and courageously steps forward her future lights up so inspiration what frightens you is something much smaller than you know if you are experiencing pain holding on tighter will only worsen the situation your greatness awaits so this situation that keeps occurring perhaps you're giving it a much look, look at this person and this person you're giving it a much bigger light or weight than what it actually is and instead of it hindering you from you achieving what you want perhaps it's just trying to continuously come and come and come for you to shift perspectives then to believe that it's hindering you perhaps with the four of cups it is offering you something you wouldn't have seen or recognized or even learned unless the situation appeared. It is, in my opinion, trying to teach you how to adapt to... I'm saying adapt not because of the Ten of Pentacles. It's because I've noticed they're warm and they're still enjoying their outside um, bonding. So it's trying to teach you to adapt 
to be flexible on how to deal with a situation rather than feeling like it owns you. Ten of Pentacles shows that you are going to manifest what you want. You're going to get everything that, um, that you want. But life naturally works in cycles. And as you will always know, success or getting something is not always done right away. And it's not a straight line. And it's the skills of learning how to be flexible and move with the waves rather than hating it is what always gets you to your destination, just like a boat or an airplane or riding a horse and so on. Getting there is a skill on its own. In fact, it becomes a hobby by itself, like riding horses or um, learning how to fly for some people <laughs> or, or owning a ship also for some people. But uh, transportation is expensive, but you get what I mean. So this is saying when a difficulty arises, it's time to study it with the books here. It's time to look deeper into it and say, hey, this is my destination. And these are the strong things standing in my way. Instead of it letting it break your spirit halfway or right from the beginning, say, fine, I'm supposed to uh, uh, go where I'm supposed to go. I'm supposed to manifest what it is that I want to manifest. And so in this case, with your card saying, have faith, it, this, the, these things don't show up to block where you're supposed to go because you will be reaching this destination and you will be manifesting what you want. And so it's trying to teach you a new skill that successful people who manifest do. They don't say, oh, I'm not meant to go or I'm not meant to go out because the child is there. It's supposed to teach you, hmm, what smart way can I go about this? Do I need to study something? Do I need to learn something? Do I need to gain more skills to be able to get myself out of this situation? And I just got a ringing in my ear. Perhaps this is like so important here. Maybe you want to um, learn something. And I, and I reread, we tell stories. First, you want to learn something from the situation and you want to restart retelling the story to yourself in a different matter. Always tell yourself, I meant to get there. I meant to manifest. So what is this teaching me? What do I need to do to get there? Always change your narrative from I can't to how can I? This change in perspective will change everything for you. It won't make you feel like the situation is much bigger than you, it will start putting you in the same level of the situation. And the situation is tough and so are you. The question of here with the faith, how can I reach my destination? It is never telling you that you can't and that's why you have faith. Have faith always and remove, acknowledge the smoke and mirrors. What are they trying to tell you? What if you sh always shift your mindset from I can't to how can I? You will always find the way returning home. You will always find your way back to that motivation and back to that wish that you have. These, stand these things standing in your way are part of nature. Uh, uh, we all face trouble trying, not trouble, challenges, the word I'm looking for, trying to do something. And learning that it's part of the process will never break that psych ever again. It's always about shifting the, the mindset from, oh, this is much bigger than me, to what can I do to reach, to continue to reach my destination, to restart, to continue. Uh, see, with the Eight of Cups, if it's broken, then walk away from... Um, that way of doing it and figure out another way to do it. Always ask, what can I learn? How can I 
understand the situation better so that I can get to my destination. See, this way of thinking at the bottom here will, be, will have a great energetic start, a strong start with the Ace of Wands because it will awaken something within you for you to always reach your dreams with the Nine of Cups. This will be the beginning of your journey of transition. This thought of what can I do, like challenge here, the book on the other side, right? So what can I do? That type of thought will always provide you with a solution and it will awaken your power to not be broken midway, but it will awaken your power to always achieve your dream. Once you hold that wand, nothing can take anything from you. You can always manifest what you want once you take a hold of the wand. And the wand is called, how can I do it? And not, I'm helpless. The wand is called, how can I do it? See, the Knight of Cups is follow your heart. And so the reading throughout is encouraging you to not give up on the things you want and the things that you love. The question always becomes, how can I do what I want? Because I meant to follow my heart. How can I achieve that? This will be your way out. This will be your way home into it, your way into what you want, towards what you want. Okay, so you have two more cards here. Let's check them out. You have the Hierophant. That's the key. Do you see? That is the key. Learning. The Hierophant is the learning. Learning is the key. The how. How can I do it? And you have the death card. It's interesting. It's like your reading keeps confirming because I just thought we we're going to get more guidance. But the death card is about a transformation. A, this huge transformation to this situation is to not feel locked down, not to feel like the situation is ever bigger than you. It's here challenging you to learn something that you don't know. Because otherwise, you know, the steps of learning, the first one is not knowing that you don't know. And then the second step of learning is knowing that you don't know something. So something has been identified. Third is to learn about it and try to apply it, but you're applying it consciously. And fourth, you're applying it unconsciously. It becomes part of you. So these situations are just pushing you out of the not knowing what you don't know. You know how when we get into something new, there are so many terminologies and challenges and things that we didn't even know would happen when we get into this hobby or like take talking of transportation, learning a bike, right? We first time when we were young, we thought we we're just going to ride on the bike and ride it. We never thought that the bike would tilt and make us fall, right? There are all sorts of trouble and uh, I keep saying trouble, challenges that happen that we had no idea existed. Now that you've stepped into this new beginning as you're manifesting, there's a limiting belief. The limiting belief here is, oh, I'm, uh, I, I, this is a block. But it's not. It's just teaching you that these are the sort of challenges that happen in this situation. And so instead of falling with the bicycle and going, oh, I'm never going to ride a bike again, do what a child does. And going, oh, let me try again. Let me try again. Maybe let someone older than me teach me or let me read about it. So the question with the child that's never... I'm not going to ride this bicycle. It's always how they keep getting back up and trying until they make it. And that's the way out to everything. How can I make it? Never break your spirit. And there's a limiting belief in I can't to changing this. I can't knowing that this is a challenge that happens. Challenges happen to everyone and challenges happen to people in the area that they're not seeing. Because if you do see it, it won't be a challenge. You'll know how to deal with it. So this is where with the smoke and mirrors, call it your blind spot. It's showing you something. Always make your wand work. The wand and the key is the learning. How can I make it work? This question, and that's why there's a highlight here, this question will transform your whole life. Never let anything stand in your way or break your spirit ever again in your life. Follow your heart. Move in the direction of your heart and always ask how.
And this way, you will always find your way. Always. You will always find your way. And my dear pile number three, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity handbook. It could truly help you out plan and achieve your goals for the next year. If you love to have goals for the next year, you know, new year, new energy, this book can truly change your life forever. It's small, straight to the point. You're not going to waste time or procrastinate reading it, but you will find that it has all the key advice and secrets to helping you become a productive person right away, all while enjoying this journey. And if you're interested in checking it out, this will be a book that will that is a total mind changer. Changing mindsets is totally the way to go when doing anything that you want. You will find great information in this book. It was written with every bit of my heart with the full intention to change everyone reading it as soon as they finish this ebook. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find the link to it down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number three, thank you so much for tuning in, sending you so much love. <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.